If you are like me and you have failed to learn TDD multiple times, you have watched hundreds of YouTube videos with introduction guides to TDD, including my own, but applying it to a real world use case seems like science fiction. To help you overcome this, let's see how to apply test driven development to a common case with services and repositories. From my experience, the difficult part when learning TDD is when you start touching the outside world of your application. Once you get out of those domain models that are pretty simple to test, you start going to things like this. For example, imagine that you have your core application. Inside of your core application, common cases that you have as a given service, like an order service, a command handler, something like that. And that block of code will be responsible for touching things that are outside of your application, like asking an API, some data, uh, calling a database. Usually it's on those cases that things start to get tricky. So let's take a look into an example like this one, where we have, for example, an order service. This order service will receive a basket ID. That basket will already have all the items that we want to convert into an order. So we'll need to call a basket service database whatever, we don't know at this stage. What we know is that we need to get something from the outside world. So we will basically use a repository or a gateway to access that basket. And then once we have it, we'll convert it to an order. We will not care about the order aggregate in this video. Then once we have the order, we'll call an order repository to save that order. So what we'll be seeing is how to drive all this development against the edge of our application using TDD. So what do I have here? I have here basically two projects, one with my core application. I have a folder domain because we'll not look into that. I just want to have this as simple as possible for this video. And now we'll start writing our tests for our order service. So let's create our first test class. I will name it something like create order tests. I will be using XUnit on this case. And let's create our first test. From my explanation to you, what you know is that I will have a basket ID that I need to grab that basket from somewhere. We don't care if it's an API, a database, whatever. So let's create our first test based on that. Let's check if I provide a basket that doesn't exist, a basket ID for a basket that it's not on that store, what should happen? I know that this will be an async operation. So let's just create here a, an async task test and I will name it given an invalid basket ID, then throw a basket not found exception. Now is that moment where it is important to start to daydreaming what will be your application. So you are starting to design the contract that others will be using, for example, your application service. So on this case, let's imagine that I have something like that will be a service. What I can imagine now is that someone using this can be using something like a new order service, let's say. So now I have my test in a red state. So the first thing that I will be doing is to converting this into a green state. So using Rider, I will just create the order service for now. And I will have a method on this service that I can imagine that can be something like create order async. And now I need to imagine what will be provided here. So I know that I need to provide the basket ID. It's all, all the ID is that. So let's say that is a 10. It's the basket ID number 10. I need to provide, for example, a shipping address. Let's say for that, let me just create here a simple static method that will help us out. Okay, it's shipping address, creating an address, and I will call that here. And since this is an async operation, I like to provide an, a cancellation token. So I will just say here default. I have the signature of that method. I will need to await this thing. And now I can use a refactoring from Rider once again and just create that method on my service. Right, public async task, create order async. Okay, give proper names to things. So this will be the basket ID. I have my address and my cancellation token. Let's just convert this to return something. And why I'm doing this, because I want to put this tests in a green state. Let me just run the tests. As you can see, it's succeeding. So let's do a small refactoring and move this order service to the correct place. Move my order service into the core application and here just do a small refactoring to change the namespace. Okay, so now let me do one thing that I really like, that is every time that I'm writing code and tests at the same time, following TDD, I like to put things side by side. Okay, and let me collapse the solution explorer for now because it will give me some extra room. My tests are uh, going through, but this test is not doing what it, I'm expecting it to do right now. So what do I expect this 
to do. It should throw a basket not found exception. Every time that I provide a basket ID that doesn't exist. So now I need to start thinking, how will I do that? So the first thing that I can do here is just do the assertion. I'm using fluent assertion, so I can do something like this. I define here an action and then just ensure that that action should throw a given exception. I'm naming it basket not found exception. Once again, use rider to help me out creating this type exception and move this to the correct place. On my core project, I will create an exceptions folder and here I will move my basket not found exception and change the namespace. Okay, looks good to me. So let's run the test once again. Okay, we are in a red state. So let's work to move this into a green state. Now I need to think how this service will be able to know that this basket not found exception should be thrown, right? So I will provide this basket ID and I need to think how we'll be using the basket ID to get it from somewhere. Usually in the .NET space, what we do is doing through dependency injection, right? So we provide to our order service a given interface that will abstract us from talking to that external component. Since I'm connecting to an external dependency, I will create an interface to abstract me from that. So I don't need to be coupled to that one. So let's start to imagine what that dependency will be, what that interface will be. So I need an inter interface that will be something like an iBasket repository, for example. This could be a repository, a gateway, whatever. Let me just go here and create that interface. And now let me imagine what that interface will expose. So what I can imagine for now is that it exposes a public task. And on this case, I will be using it to get a given basket. So I can imagine that this return a basket that is a type that I already have on my domain. And I will use something like a get the sync and I provide the basket ID. Once again, since it's um, an async method that will touch the IO, I will use your cancellation token and ready to use it. So. I have here my, my basket, so I need to provide it my order server. I'll be this thing here, sit here, and as you can see, now it's in the red state. Now that I have this interface, let's just assign it to null for now, just to make this test go through. And let's copy this thing here, paste it. And as you can see, it's complaining because the constructor doesn't take that. So to make this thing compile, let's just move first this interface to the core application, extract that from the test class, moving it to my core application. Let's follow the general convention of having your repositories folder. But if you have been watching my videos, you know that I'm a bit of against of this approach. I prefer a feature folder approach, but I'm trying to show you with a common example that you will find everywhere. So I have here the repositories. So now let me just move this thing into this one, change the namespace. Perfect. So now I'm able to go to my order service that I have here on the right, and I will create here a private read-only iBasket repository, and I will receive it, and I will generate a constructor for that. Now my code already compiles. It still will not go through. It's still in a red state. So what you can do next to, to go to our green state. Let's write that code that will ensure that this thing exists. So here in our implementation, I can do something like if the basket repository get a sync, just use here an await var basket equals to await this thing. I can get my basket ID, provide my cancellation token. And now I can check if this basket, for example, is not null. Let's say if basket is null, then we will throw a new basket not found exception, that one that we created. Perfect. Let's see if this thing runs. As you can see, it's still in the red state. Why? Because I'm not throwing that exception yet. And besides that, I will have a null reference exception because this interface that I'm injecting is in fact null because I'm forcing it here to be null. So what you can do instead, probably you are used to, to use mock, for example, you install the, the mock library and then here you will define a new mock of that I interface repository and then you will set up that the get a sync method should return something. For example, it can return null. What I prefer to do on this case, since I reserve interfaces for these things that will be swapped out and usually I'm faking the behavior of something that is outside, like a, an external API or an external database, what I'll be doing is that I will create a new thing, a public class, 
that I will name fake basket repository. This fake class will implement the interface and the implementation can be something as simple like this. For example, you can create a given dictionary, for example, and now on your get, you just go to that dictionary and you try to get that basket ID from, from that uh, dictionary and you return based on that. One cool thing of doing this approach of writing these things first is that you can see here that there's a suggestion that I'm not taking advantage of the nullable reference types. So I can improve my design at this point. For example, since this thing can be null, why not doing something like this? So let me go back to my interface and just say, and just say that the basket can be null. And now that I have this fake repository, I can go here on the top and just do new fake basket repository. So let's run the test. Okay, and as you can see, we are in a green state once again. Since we are doing TDD, now it's that moment where we look into our code and we think if there's anything that we can improve here. So on this case, I have nothing here on this side that I feel that needs to be improved. And on this side as well, maybe let it's the moment to move this uh, fake to a given folder on my test project. So let's do that. I'll create here fakes folder and move this fake basket repository into here and just change the namespace. Let's give another step. When we look into our interface, another thing that I know that I need to do is that if this shipping address it's null, for example, it should throw, for example, an argument null exception. So let's create a test for that. Given a null shipping address, then throw an argument null exception. Perfect. It's this what we, we want. So on this case, let's let's do this the same once again. Let's arrange here our service. Now let's just copy this thing because it's also one action that we need to assert. And on this case, the data that I'll be providing is in fact here an no, and I'm providing once again the default constellation to token and let's do our assertion. So our assertion is that it should be an argument, no exception, for example. Then I could check the parameter name and all those kind of things. On this case, let's run the test. And as you can see, it's red. Why? Because I'm not throwing that exception that I'm expecting. Since this is just checking if the parameters are filled or not, I prefer to do this before touching a different service. So let's do it here on the top. The thing that I can do here is something like if shipping address is null, throw new argument null exception. By the way, you can use some libraries for guard clauses like this and will simplify your code. I'm just writing it here all by myself. Now let's run the test once again, green state once again. Let's move forward. And as I told you, we'll not only be getting this basket from uh, an external service, for example, we also want to add this to a given repository, database, storage, API, whatever. So on this case, what I'll be doing is just create a new test to ensure that I have here my fact. Once again, it will be an async test. I will name it given a valid basket. Then I add an order to a repository. Once again, I need to set up here my basket, right? And I will call the service. So await service create order async. I will say that it's the basket number one and with the shipping address and with the cancellation token. What I want to check here, I want to check that this thing has been added to a given repository, right? So what I need to do here is that I, I need to have a way for this service to know where to touch it, where to store it. So once again, you, let's use the same strategy as we used in this basket repository. So I will create here a new interface that will be my iOrder repository. And for now, let's say that it, it's null. This iOrder repository needs to be created and let's start to daydream what we imagine that will be the interface, the contract exposed by this thing. What I need this interface to expose to me is a way to, to call a method. I say something like add a sync and I will send you the order and I'm expecting you to save it somewhere. Add a sync, order, and once again, a cancellation token. Now I can provide it to the order service. So let's say here that it goes in order repository. This interface needs to live inside of my core application. Otherwise I can't use it in the order service. So let's go once again, move it and move it to my repositories folder. Go there, change the namespace. And now let's go to our implementation. And once again, define here a private read only I order repository and initialize it from the constructor. And now I will be checking if in fact, since the request is valid, it has been added to this repository. Let's try to do something like 
here do an order repository dot and I need here some kind of get to access that thing. But I don't have it because this interface doesn't expose it. Sometimes we will have it, other times we will not. Maybe we will be using here, for example, a mocking library and on that case, we'll just create a, a verify that will check if the add method has been invoked. Since I prefer to use uh, fakes, what I'll be doing is that I will go here to my fake thing. I will create a new fake that will be my fake order repository. Once again, this fake will implement an I order repository. The implementation follows the same strategy as we have seen for the basket one. So I have a dictionary with a, a given int that will be my basket ID because each order will be correlated to a basket ID on this case. And I will add it to, to that dictionary uh, every time that the add async is invoked. But as I told you, I need a way to check if it's inside of this dictionary. I have two options. I can either expose this thing as a public, but I, I prefer to expose a given method for that. So I'll create here an order that will get from the basket ID. And this thing, as you can see, only exists on this fake repository. It doesn't exist in the interface. I'm not changing the public contract for the sake of testing. So let's go back to our test. And now I have my get here, but I still need to change here to say that this is a var. And in fact, I'm using a new fake order repository and I need to provide the basket ID. So let me just extract this one that I'm providing here to a variable and use it here. Since this fake is returning a null in case it's not exist, I can do something as simple as this, should not be null. I can also assign this to a variable and then, for example, verify that the order has the parameters that I'm providing. All those kind of things can be done. So let's run this test to see how it is at the moment. As you can see, I can't run it yet because I have other tests that depend on it. I need to provide here a new fake order repository. So let me do that on the other ones. I could move this thing to the constructor, for example, to simplify this part. Okay, it's compiling. And as you can see, it's failing because the basket was not found. On this case, what I need to do is to apply the same idea to my basket fake. So I, let's go to the basket fake. And what I can do now is adding here a method that will be a net that will have an ID and the data that I want to add to this dictionary. So I can do my arrange, my setup of this fake before the test run. Going back to the test, I can go here to my var basket repository. Let's collapse this explorer and let's do the following. On the basket repository, let's add, move this basket ID to the top. Let's add the basket ID with a new basket and we assign it a buyer ID. And obviously we would fill other things, but this is just an example. Now that I have my arrange done, I'm adding things to the basket. I'm using always the same basket ID. I'm providing the two fakes into my order repository. Let's run it once again. And as you can see, it's still failing. Why? Because we are trying to get from the order repository an order for that basket ID, and we still can't find it. Why? Because we didn't implement it on the other side. So what we need to do now is to create our order based on the information that we got from the basket, and then adding it to the repository, invoking that interface. So on in this case, let's just create here a new order. That order receives the basket ID, the buyer, and the shipping address. And now let's do something as simple as order repository dot add a sync, send the order. We send our cancellation token, and obviously we await the result. And now if we run our tests again, you can see that we have a green one. Perfect. As you can see, the process is the same as in the simple examples that you find online. But the difference is that you not only need to daydream the contract that you'll be using, the method that you'll be invoking, but also how that uh, code that you are testing will receive as a dependency those interfaces that will touch the outside world. You can still use mocks, you can apply a technique like this one that I'm using with fakes, it's up to you. Now you know how to drive the development of codes that depends on the external world using TDD. If you have faced any other type of challenge when adopting TDD, please let me know on the comments down below. Now that you are convinced to give TDD another chance, make sure you watch my introduction to TDD right here so you can recap all the basics. I will see you soon and meanwhile, just keep things simple.